This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom. Words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust that today you will consider this like your vitamin or supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom and leave a rating and a brief written review? It would be really, really helpful. If you'd like to get on my calendar and have me uh, call you and see if there's a possibility of being together, I'm, I'm looking for the next generation of leaders. I've been at this for 38 years, and I had a lot of people so into my life. I've learned a lot of things by trial and error and a lot of error. And to whom much is given, much is required. And I'm seeking to build Ron's Academy of Leadership. And I'd like to see if there's any possibility that I'd come alongside and assist and help you. If you'd like to, just go to drronblake.com forward slash call. I'll give you a call. You'll get on my calendar. Today, I want to talk about the fact that you can make a difference, leader. You really can. Now, I know because I've gotten feedback and I've heard from many of you who listen to this podcast that you may not have a formal leadership title, but all of us are leaders. We're leading ourselves, we're leading in our families, we're leading in volunteer organizations, and regardless of what position you may hold um, where you're employed, you are a leader. And and so I want to look at, oh, let's try seven today. Seven will be a good number. Seven ways, seven things that'll have to happen in order for you and I to make a difference. If you're going to be one of those people that really seek to make a difference in this world, you're going to have to depend upon your character. Flash and uh, those kinds of things are okay. Um, It's good to have skills and talent. Obviously, it's good. We are seeking to have them all of our lives. Uh, It's important to be able to execute things. You hear me talk about that all the time and have goals and plans and vision. But you can go to the best schools, have the best laid plans, execute with flawless precision. But if you have no character, everything that you build is built like a house of cards or built on the sand and not on solid rock. I especially want to speak to those of you who are a little bit on the younger side. Build your character. Be a woman and a man of high character. Don't cut corners. Don't become a compromiser. Build your character. Um, In a part of my responsibility... I oversee the review of lots of leaders. There are 71 leaders that I have to conduct a review for. There's a section in the review that isn't so much on talent and skill sets and results. They are really character questions. And I kind of know how long the evening is going to be if if people who are in our organizations Um, don't have confidence in our character. You just can't compensate for bad character. Now, people may think because you get results, they may in the short term, and usually it's a very short term, overlook certain character flaws. But they will come out and they will be damning and they will be damaging. So as you go to build a life, and it doesn't matter what age you are, depend on good character. Have character and integrity. The second thing that I would say that will help you, my friend, to make a difference is know what your passion is. Now, oftentimes I meet people who look like the word passion has never entered their mind. There's just something draining about being around a passionless leader. Someone who doesn't get excited or enthused about anything. Now, I understand there are some of you that are saying, Dr. Ron, you're talking about personality traits. Uh, You're talking about things that for some folks are out of their control. Well, I, I get that. 
But it is interesting, even the most reserved and quiet person and the most reticent person in the room, if you can begin engaging with them and you can discover what it is they are really passionate about, you will notice their eyes become alive, their facial expressions change, their body posture changes. Uh, There is a level even for them of excitement that is enhanced beyond just regular conversation. It's because you just can't help it. When you're talking about something for which you feel passionate, it shows forth. I say to you, my leadership friends, know your passion. Find something about which you're passionate, which you believe in, which you're willing to stake your life and uh, your eternity on, and make that your passion. The third thing that I would say that will need to happen and should happen if you're the kind of person who really desires to make a difference, and that is make sure you earn respect. Don't depend on being liked. Most people that I know, and as you understand, for for much of my life, I was in pastoral ministry and work, and still to this day work with pastors predominantly. There is in certain ways in which people in certain kinds of leadership, especially, want to be people pleasers. Now, that's not in and of itself bad. Where it becomes bad or turns south and goes the other direction is when you're willing to compromise the truth, when you are unwilling to have the difficult conversations, when you are not willing to pay the price of standing up for truth and what's right and what will move the organization forward and that you uh, please people even when you don't agree with them. Now, I'm not for a person becoming a conflict and crisis magnet, as some people seem to be, but I'm wondering what would happen in the, in, in the next year in your life if you thought more about, at the end of this year, I want to be more respected and not so much worry about whether everyone likes me or agrees with me. I don't care who you are. You are going to make a decision someday that upsets someone. Someone will not like something that you did. You can count on that. But grudgingly, when you get away from the pure emotion of all of it, Will they be able to say about you, I respect them, even though I don't agree with them, I respect them. Now, it never happens in the heat of combat, but I've lived long enough that I've had people who vociferously disagreed with me, were very unhappy, and I'm really kind of underselling it, they were mad, who have come around sometimes a long time, sometimes not so long, and they'll say to me, You know, I didn't understand why you made that decision. I didn't agree with it, and I didn't like it. But I understand why you did it. And whether they say it or not, what what they are saying is, I respect you for sticking by your guns, sticking by your values, doing what you said you were going to do, and doing what you believed to be was the right thing. That's, That's number three thing that you can do to make a difference. Allow me to give you the fourth item leader on you can make a difference, and that is focus on people. It is so easy, I mean it's almost unconsciously easy, that we get so focused on the task, so focused on our goal, so focused upon our vision or the mission of the organization that we almost steamroll over people. Now I know there are early adopters, people that will just go right along, they love change, they love what's happening, And there are many people who are going to resist not only what you're saying, at times it appears they are resisting you. But we are here for people. I I don't, it does not really matter what area of life you're leading in, it's about people. Now, I mean, let's be sensitive. A little empathy goes a long way. Some of our people are suffering from change fatigue. It doesn't mean that we should stop and wait till they're emotionally ready to move on. But what it does is what it does mean is we should consider people. 
we should think about them. We should look at the world from their perspective. You want to be an empathetic leader, you have to put yourself in the position of someone else and at least attempt to make uh, some sense of why they view the world as they view it. Love people. I used to say, if people are convinced that you love God and you love them, they will put up with a lot of nonsense. But they have to be convinced that you really do love them. You want to make a difference when you come down to the end of your life? It'll be the people that you've encountered and the people who remember you and that you remember that make the biggest difference. Uh, let's look at number five. The fifth thing to will help you to make a difference in your world. Are you ready? Here's what it is. If you want to make a difference, have fun. Now, I know for many of you, that seems to be tremendously out of place in this list. I, I get that, that much of what you and I are involved with is, is serious. It's almost Judgment Day serious. And oftentimes, one of the pitfalls that leaders... Um, succumb to is the fact that we take ourselves far too seriously. Laugh at yourself. See the humor in the things that are going on. I, I know of no greater tension breaker, no greater sense of relief that comes to individuals and an organization than when you see the humor in the things that you're involved with. I have so many illustrations here. I don't know where to even begin. Be a self-deprecating leader. Don't make fun of other people publicly. Make fun of yourself. I just recently told a story in front of my leadership team at a Christmas banquet of a situation I was involved in recently in Chicago in which I was hundreds of miles outside of my comfort zone. And yes, I looked foolish and I looked stupid. But rather than hiding it, I went out and kind of shared it with them. And rather than turning people off or them thinking, well, I thought he was smarter than that. I thought he was better than that. It really has an endearing quality. Just think about the people who tell stories on themselves. Now, I'm not talking about digging up dirt, but I'm just talking about letting people laugh with you, not at you, that you think they're laughing at you. They're laughing with you. If you had to make a choice between you wanting, wanting to be with a fun person or a person who is absolutely zero on the fun meter. If you have any reasonableness to you, you would choose to be with the fun person. You make a difference by being a fun person. Have fun. The sixth way that you can make a difference is be someone who brings people together. Work on bringing the sides together. Work on listening. How do you bring people together? You listen to them. You, 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 you be quiet for a while. You don't tell them your opinion. Um, and this is a, an area where I struggled with for a great deal of my life because I always thought everyone was dying to know what my opinion was on every particular subject. And I offered it freely. But if you're going to bring people together, somebody needs to try to understand Someone needs to find the common ground. Oh, in the world we live in today, what well, we really are in a dearth of leadership, and especially leaders who can bring people together. You want to be a difference maker? Learn to bring people together. And finally, you can make a difference. I want to tell you this. You, my friend, you can make a difference. I've had so many people make a difference in my life that I, I will be forever indebted. There was a time in my life when I um, dropped out of church, dropped out of the scene. A terrible thing had happened in our family. I was a young boy, and I was floundering. And uh, this may not relate to you if you've never been around church, and this is not meant to be a church speech. It's just meant to be a speech on you can make a difference. It doesn't matter who you are. And one Friday afternoon when I was in junior high, there was a knock on the door, and it was a man and woman I didn't know, but I, I could kind of tell that he was probably a pastor. And he intersected with my life, and saw past my hurt, my pain, my confusion, my background. I mean, I was headed for nowhere fast. No one anywhere in my life thought that I was going to amount to too much. And he became like a father figure, a spiritual leader, a mentor, a friend. 
and just a few years ago, I had the high privilege of officiating his funeral, and I struggled to try to find adequate language to say how much of a difference he made in my life. The entire trajectory of my life changed forever because of that man. And so my goal is, will the Lord help me to have that kind of influence on someone? I I don't care who you are. I, I don't even care if you're unemployed. You can make a gigantic difference in someone's life, and it's up to you. You can do it. You really can. And someone, somewhere, my friend, is counting on you. Let's make up our minds that we're going to be leaders who make a difference. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust that this has been like a vitamin or supplement for your mind and heart today. And wherever you receive podcasts, please subscribe and leave a brief rating and review for Dr. Ron's words of wisdom. I'd love to talk to you. Get on my calendar. I'm looking to build out Ron Blake's Leadership Academy in this new year, and I'd like to see if I can help you get unstuck. Just go to drronblake.com forward slash call. I'll call you, and I'll see what the possibilities are. And until next time, remember, leader, you are really doing better than you think you are, and you are making a difference. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying, have a great and blessed day.